I'm Pat Dugod. This screencast is about solving logarithmic equations and inequalities. To do that, we're going to use a couple of properties. Um, the property of equality for logarithmic functions is that as long as the b, the base, is other than 1 and is a positive number, then the log base b of x equals the log base b of y, if and only if x equals y. And this is very analogous to the exponential property of equality. So for example, if the log base 5 of x equals the log base 5 of 8, then x must equal 8. And the inverse is also true. If x equals 8, then the log base 5 of x equals the log base 5 of 8. Let's put this to use. Suppose we have an equation, a logarithmic equation. The log base 8 of x equals 4 thirds. We can rewrite that into exponential form by saying x equals the base of 8 raised to the 4 thirds power. And we can actually, you could evaluate that directly on your calculator, or you could rewrite 8 to a power of 2 to the third. And so 2 to the third to the 4 thirds will be 2 to the 3 times 4 over 3, 2 to the fourth or 16. Again, you could actually go directly from x equals 8 to the 4 thirds to 16 on your calculator. If we're going to try to find the solution to log base 4 of x squared equals the log base 4 of negative 6 minus 8. Since the bases are the same in this original equation, we can set the inputs equal to each other because of the property of equality for logarithmic functions. Therefore, x squared must equal to negative 6 minus 8. Add 6x plus 8 to both sides. We wind up with a quadratic. x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And we can actually factor that quadratic. If you'll recall from previous lessons, um, we're looking for the numbers that multiply to give me 8 and add to give me 6. And that will be x plus 4 times x plus 2. Therefore, the solutions to this using the zero product property are x plus 4 equals 0 and x plus 2 equals 0, which leads us to x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 2. And if you input those both into the original logarithmic equation, you would find that both of those are true. So we have a similar property of inequality for logarithmic functions, just like we had a property of inequality for exponential functions. Now, if the base is greater than 1 and x is positive, in the first case, if the log base b of x is greater than y, then x has to be greater than b to the y. And that's just rewriting that into exponential form. If the base is greater than 1 and x is positive and the log base b of x is less than y, then that's going to tell us that x has to be between 0 and b to the y. Let's solve a logarithmic inequality. Solving the log base 6 of x is greater than 3. Our base is 6. Uh, using the uh, property of inequality for logarithmic uh, functions, that tells us that, therefore, x must be greater than 6 to the third. And that's really kind of just rewriting in exponential form. So simplifying 6 to the third is 216 x must be greater than 216 for this inequality to be true. Now if we have logarithms on each side, we certainly have to make sure they have the same base. So if we have the log base 7 of 2x plus 8 is greater than the log base 7 of x plus 5, using the property for inequalities for logarithmic functions, operation has to apply for the input. So therefore, 2x plus 8 must be greater than x plus 5. Using a little bit of algebra here, if we subtract x from both sides and subtract 8 from both sides, we're going to isolate the variable and get x greater than negative 3. And in fact, that is our solution. All x is greater than negative 3 will make this original inequality a true statement. So we've looked at solving logarithmic equations and inequalities in this screencast. 